Hey everyone, welcome to a rather unusual video for me. I'm not going to be gaming, uh, instead I'm going to be showing you something that I used to collect and that I used to be very fond of, and that's uh, Star Wars miniatures. Uh, this is something I collected in middle school and into high school. Uh, me and my siblings were really into it. And I thought I'd take a little trip down memory lane, dig up some old nostalgia, and just kind of look through some cards, show them to you, explain them a little bit. And I hope you'll find it relaxing. The snow's coming down pretty hard outside. It's nice and warm in here. Got nothing else to do but just sit here and relax, so hope you'll relax with me. Before we get too much further, um, I wanted to just show you a quick clip of where I keep my miniatures. Um, so I'll show you that now. Yeah, so I keep them in this big uh, container and I've never actually counted how many I own, but I imagine it's in the hundreds. And I keep the cards in this little side container here. You can see there's quite a lot of cards. And then there's even more in these. In the container itself, that big uh, box actually opens up and there's even more inside. So yeah, I keep it in a tackle box actually. Our parents got us all these big tackle boxes one year for Christmas because we were getting so many of them that we needed some place to keep them. So they keep them all in there and they're organized and yeah. So we're just going to be looking through some of them today. I'll, I'll explain a little bit about them and how they work and, you know. Um, so Star Wars Miniatures is both a collectible uh, and a board game. So there are things you could collect, but then there's also a game to play. Sort of like, you know, Pokemon cards or Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, and obviously it's about the Star Wars universe. And each miniature has a matching card that goes with it. And the idea is you battle each other um, by making team teams of characters. Uh, and then doing battle on a, a uh, square grid map. Which I'll show you at the end. Um, and the cards all have, the cards and the characters all have different factions. So, you know, like Republic or Separatist and so on. So, the first card I'm going to show you is actually a fringe card. And what that means is um, Fringe is a faction that's basically neutral or can go with any other um, any other faction. So pretty much the epitome of Fringe would be Lando Calrissian, uh, who we first meet in uh, episode five, I think, right? Yeah, episode five. Um, so, if I hold that just a little closer, get to focus, you can see the faction has their own symbol in the corner, has their name, um, and the color outline also indicates the faction. In this case, it's called Fringe. 
and fringe cards are unique in that no matter which faction you're playing as you can always have fringe cards as part of your team so if I was playing Republic uh, I could have both Republic cards and fringe cards um, and so like I said each um a matching miniature to go with it um, and you move them across the map to indicate their position in the game and you can see the miniature matches the picture on the card so going over the aspects of the card itself. Um, we have their stats. So we have hit points and defense, attack, and damage. And then we have their special abilities over here in this box. Um, and then on the top right, we have their total point cost so if you were playing a game with someone you'd both agree on a certain number of points that you can spend um, for your team so a common one is like 150 so I would have 150 points to spend on any cards in my faction that add up to 150 and then we'd battle each other um, so their hit points obviously how much health they have their defense is what you roll against when you attack. So if I was attacking someone, I would roll 20-sided die, and I would add my attack value to that. And if it exceeds their defense value, then I do my damage to their hit points. So pretty straightforward. And then they also have their um, uh, special abilities. So. Uh, Lando is unique, obviously, which means there can only be one of him on the game, game board. Uh, and then he has double attack, which means he can make an extra attack instead of moving. Normally you move, uh, and then you attack, or you can move twice, but this guy can attack twice. And then he has a commander effect, uh, because he's an important character, he's a commander, Oh, he has his commander effect that says allied Bespin guards get plus two attack. So anyone on his team who is a Bespin guard gets to add plus two to their attack value. So that's Lando. Now I'm just gonna sh I'm gonna show you think at least one from each faction and up next we have the rebel faction the rebel alliance so what better to embody the rebel alliance than princess leia See, she's wearing her Endor garb. And this is her card. So she uh, costs 14, uh, whereas Lando costs 16. Um, and she has fairly standard stuff. Notably, Leia also has a new section called Force Powers, and she has two Force Points. So you can use one Force Point to reroll the dice one time at any time in the game. So because she's the daughter of Anakin, um, you know, Force is in her family pretty strongly, which is why she has two Force Points. And she has her own commander effect as well.
So that's later. Now, I think next, uh, let's look at the New Republic. So. The New Republic, obviously, is the Republic that was born after the events of Episode 6, um, when the Empire was overthrown and the Republic was restored order uh, around the time that the Mandalorian TV show takes place. Um, so, here we have Jaina Solo. And she is the daughter of Leia and Han Solo. She costs a bit more because she's a full-blown Jedi, so she's a bit more powerful. Um, you'll notice that she has higher attack and higher damage because of her lightsaber, uh, but she has melee attack, meaning she can only attack people who are adjacent to her, obviously because she has a lightsaber. And she also has force powers, um, and she has a force ability as well, lightsaber deflect. And it says force one. When hit by a non-melee attack, this character takes no damage with a save of 11. So what that means is if someone's attacking her and they hit, she can spend one force point and roll a die. And if it's 11 or higher, then she takes no damage from that attack. So because she has three force points, she could theoretically do that three times. Um, so it's Jaina Solo. Um, she only costs 25, which I think is a bit cheap considering her stats. Um, but we'll see that there's no... Uh, the, the point cost of cards is not always predictable. Um, as much as uh, my siblings and I tried to you know, distill it down to a formula, which I'll talk about later. Uh, you really can't because it's just up to the discretion of the people who made the cards. So, it's Gina Solo. Now let's take a step back and go back to the fringe um, faction for a second. And I want to show you that not all cards, or not all miniatures, are one one by one grid tile. So here we have a young crate dragon. Now this is a three by three. So it takes up three squares by three squares on the map. Um, and this card costs quite a bit because it's pretty strong. It's a Krayt Dragon. If you've seen the Mandalorian series, um, you'll remember they fight a fully grown adult Krayt Dragon and it's the size of, you know, it's humongous, it's huge. Um, but this is just a young one, so it's pretty small. Um, even still, it's pretty powerful, it costs 50. It's got 30 damage, which is uh, the second most a card can have, I think. I think one or two cards have damage 40, but that's if they're like an at, -AT or something. So um, this character is unique because they're savage, and that's because they're non-sentient, which means they have to end their move next to an enemy um, if it can, in other words, if this guy's here and Leia's here, if he still has movement left, he has to move next to Leia because he really wants to attack her. Uh, you know, he can't buy his time and wait back there. So, yeah, three by three. Um, I think the largest they go to is five by five, but I could be wrong about that. So that's the young crate dragon. 
Now you're probably wondering, you know, what does um what does the map look like that you play that you play this game on? So I have an example one for you. It's really beat up because it's so old and it's been used so many times. So Fold it all the way, but you can kind of get an idea. It's just a, uh, you know, it's a square grid map. Uh, it's got different kinds of terrain on it, like walls that you can't move through. These green outlined squares uh, mean it's cover. So if you're st if you're st if you're here and you're attacking someone here because you're shooting over cover. Uh, there are certain bonuses or uh, certain effects that apply to that. Um, and it also costs more movement to move over cover. Um, so that's what the map looks like. And I really suck at folding these for some reason. I'm notorious for tearing these. So, now let's take a little journey back in time and let's, let's uh, go all the way back to the Old Republic. Now the Old Republic, um, if you played, uh, you know, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 1 or 2, that's, um, that's the period of time where these cards come from. So for this one, Uh, old Republic leader named Vodosiosk Boss. And he was a Jedi Master. Um, and he trained a lot of Jedi, one of whom is Exar Kun. And I'll show you that card in a second. But he's very powerful. He costs 44. Um, he has a number of force powers as well. Um, and he actually has force spirit four, which says if this character is defeated, immediately add four po force points to an ally with a force rating. So if he was on a team with another person who had force points and he dies, that other ally gets four force points, which is a lot. Um, he also has a lot of defense. Um, so he's pretty good. He's, uh, he also has Master of the Force too, which is a really good ability. That means he can spend a Force Point twice in a single turn. Uh, and not many people have that ability. So he's a really strong uh, Jedi Master uh, back in the time of the Old Republic. Um, and one thing I forgot to show you, if you look down here, this little symbol, uh, tells you how rare the card is. So this star inside of a circle means it's an ultra rare. Um, I think just a star is rare, a diamond is uncommon, and then a circle is common. So yeah, this is an ultra, ultra rare card. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Now, opposing the Old Republic were the Sith, and I have two here. Um, the reason I'm showing both of you these, or showing you both of these, is because these are it's a rather special combo. Um, and the reason is. focus. These are both ultra rare Sith and I got both of them on my birthday. I think when I was turning like 12 or 13 or something. Um, so it's Exar Kun. So the 
guy I just showed you, Voto Siask boss, he trained Exarchum before he came a Sith. And then Darth Bane, who was a rather uh, rather infamous Sith. So both very, very powerful, costing in the 80s. Uh, 200 hit points is pretty much as high as it goes. Um, you know, they both have just tons of force powers and damage and yeah, very, very strong. Um, but I think it's just neat that I got two of these ultra rares uh, from packs that I opened on my birthday. So that was kind of fun. Now, also around during the time of the Old Republic and the Sith were the Mandalorians. So here we have a Mandalorian commander. And again, if you've seen the Mandalorian series, you'll sort of recognize the armor style that Mandalorians are known for. But even though that show takes place during the time of the New Republic, Mandalorians trace their origins way back thousands of years, so yeah, this guy's uh, not that interesting, he's not even unique, but it's just a basic Mandalorian commander. I don't even have that many Mandalorian cards, um, so yeah, hey, you might also recognize the uh, symbol there from the Mandalorian TV show, uh, but these cards... These cards predate that show by many, many years. Now, something interesting. Before Disney purchased Star Wars and kind of revitalized it, there were a lot of uh, I'd say fan fiction, but they were like actual published books about the events that took place after episode six. And everything after episode six in those fan stories has been declared non-canon uh, by Disney. Um, so these people really shouldn't exist and they don't exist. But since these cards were made before Disney bought Star Wars, um, yeah, so this is the the faction, the Yuzhan Vong. And this is a faction of just like really crazy aliens that if I recall correctly came from a different galaxy altogether. I could be totally wrong about that. Um, and all Yuzhan Vong are immune to the force, which is interesting. And this is one reason why they pose such a threat to the New Republic in that alternate timeline, which is no longer canon. And this is the faction I have the least of. I think I only have five Yuzhan Vong cards. And yeah, it's just pretty cool because something that really shouldn't even be around anymore, sh shouldn't exist, um, but still have cards for it. Oh, uh, I guess the last thing I wanted to show you was that my siblings and I were so into this that we actually started to make our own cards eventually. So, I mean, these look pretty crappy because we were just kids, but we analyzed as many cards as we could and came up with our own system for uh, determining how many points they cost that seemed to be pretty accurate. So we were able to make our own cards that were more or less fair in a battle because the points were pretty, uh, seemed to be pretty, pretty accurate in terms of what they would cost if they had been um, assigned a value by the actual game maker. Um, so yeah, we just made so many cards. You know, let's see, Jack Tickler, 
all these names that I came up with. Uh, Turban, Sunleaper, Odon, Selene, oh, Kipfisto, that's actual real person. Um, Jodo, Utila, Irani, Basa, yeah. So many. And we tried to make the cards <laughs> look a little convincing, but we didn't do such a great job. So sometimes we play with these cards and just use one of the existing miniatures to go along with it. Um, yeah, a lot of good memories. A lot of, a lot of time spent as a kid just, just coming up with new ways to play and new cards to play with. So this was just a very, very small sample of um, my Star Wars miniatures. Um, hope you enjoyed this really geeky video. Hope you found it relaxing. Um, and I will see you next time.